שלום, ערב טוב לכולכם. תחרות רובינשטיין ה-17, אנחנו ביום השני כאן באולם רקנטי במוזיאון תל אביב. שמענו כבר שבעה מתחרים מתוך שלושים ושלושה המשתתפים, ובמקצה שלפנינו ינגנו עוד שלושה. Welcome back the uh, 17th Rubenstein competition, the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. This is the second day and seven pianists have already played their first stage recitals and we are ready for three more in this session. אני מבקשת רק להזכיר לכם לכבות טלפונים, אם לא עשיתם את זה עדיין, תודה. Ladies and gentlemen, the members of the jury, chairman of the jury, אריה ורדי. From USA and, Yis and Israel, Israel, כן. Vice Chair, Yochevet Kaplinsky. From Poland, Vice Chair, Katarzyna Popova-Zidron. From Israel, Taisir Elias. From Canada and Germany, Janina Fialkowska. From Japan, Noriko Ogawa. From the United Kingdom, Ronan O'Hara. From USA, Robert Levin. From USA and Bulgaria, Emil Naumov. From China, Shauhan Wang. From Israel, Asaf Zohar. Our junior jury. From Israel, Dani Dvorkin. Noah Kapelyushnik. Lior Lipschitz. Ophir Peres. Amir Ron. From Canada, Vivian Chen. From Ukraine, Tetiana Donets. And our next competitor is ready. He's the first in this session, number eight in the order. Giuseppe Guerrera, 31 years old, from Italy. He will play Beethoven, Sonata number one in F minor, opus two, number one. Alban Berg, Sonata, opus one. And his final piece will be Liszt Tarantella from Venezia and Napoli. Giuseppe Guerrera.
תודה על סבלנותכם, אנחנו לא בהפסקה. למתחרים יש אפשרות לבחור את הרפרטואר ליצירות שהם מנגנים בשלב ראשון ושני, וגם את הפסנתר. ועכשיו נדרשת החלפת פסנתר, אני צודקת? כן, אוקיי. כי אני לא רואה שמשהו קורה. אני לא בטוחה שאני יכולה להחליף את הפסנתרים. די בטוחה שלא. המתחרה ששמענו ניגן בסטיינווי, המתחרה הבא מנגן בפציולי, ואנחנו נמתין ונתרגם גם לאנגלית. The competitors have a freedom of choice, they can choose between two pianos. I, I hear it happening behind me, so now the Steinway will make room for the Fazioli. The next competitor chose to play Fazioli. And uh, this has to be done, you know, very gently. The piano is heavy, but very delicate. Thank God they invented the wheels some time ago. And it's also a good time to thank everybody behind the stage working really effortlessly. You don't see them. You get to see them just every once in a while. You can applaud. It's okay. A lot of people are working really hard to make it as comfortable as possible for the competitors, and they're doing a wonderful job. And there are still many days of competition ahead of them. So you guys just tell me when you're done. It's okay. Don't rush. Do it perfectly the way you should. And I will also tell you that um, after the next competitor, we're going to have uh, a break, a short break, 20 minutes. And while we have it, we're going to have one more discussion about com competitions in music. And that will happen in the Misne Blumenthal Gallery here in the museum. It's a beautiful gallery to visit as well. We're almost done. We're done. <laughs> Thank you. Ha-mitchare haba. Our next competitor, number nine, in the order of, of, of performance is, <laughs> sorry, is Emre Yavuz, 32 years old, from Turkey. He will begin with Beethoven, Sonata number 28 in A major, opus one, continue with Scarlatti, Sonata in A major, Kirkpatrick 114, Couperin, La Bondoline, Rameau, Les Trois Mains, and he will end with his own transcription of Fandango by Boccherini. Kablu et Emre Yavuz.
אנחנו יוצאים להפסקה בת כ-20 דקות, נחזור למתחרה הבא, וכעת נעבור בשידור לדיון נוסף בסדרת הדיונים שלנו בגלריית מיזנה בלומנטל, אל אריאל כהן. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here at the Mizne Blumenthal Gallery of the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. Uh, after hearing many uh, professional pianists uh, participating in this uh, wonderful competition, the Arthur Rubinstein International uh, Piano Master Competition. So it's not only professional, it's master. But we are going to speak about, to talk about uh, amateurs. Uh, amateurs, amateur musicians, and uh, specifically amateur pianists. And I have a uh, very distinguished guest with me. Uh, let's begin from there, uh, Mr. Tal Sakharov, who is a member in our board, the board of the Rubinstein Competition. Uh, he is a marketing director in his profession, and he is a pianist, but we will have to see if, according to our definitions, he is a, a pianist or an amateur pianist. Let's wait with the definition. Uh, then we have Daphna Itzhaki. She is a professional flutist. So what is she doing here? Mm. Uh, she is managing the adult <laughs> department of music in the uh, Israel Music Conservatory, Tel Aviv, which is called Stricker. Yeah. Uh, then we have Mr. Robin, Robert Finley, who is an engineer and an amateur, a proud amateur pianist. <laughs> and we'll see uh, how, why, is, why is he so proud? <laughs> and then we have uh, with us Jaco Fischer, who is a music producer. And uh, he talks to me for years about amateur competitions. So that's the main reason that, that we wanted him to participate in this panel session. So perhaps we should begin with a question, uh, how do we define amateur musician or amateur pianist. The definition that I know, first of all, the word amateur comes from ama or amare, love, loving. In Hebrew, we have a word which is chovev, amateur, but we have also a slightly negative word for the same thing, chovevani, which is a really not so good, not so professional amateur. But I think in English, we don't have this distinction. So as far as I know, that's what I heard, but let's see if you agree with this definition. Uh, an amateur uh, musician or pianist is someone who is not uh, uh, working in this, it's not his job. He's mm -hmm. doing it outside of his regular job. Uh, do you agree with this definition? Yes, I think I, I do agree. Uh, it's really somebody who has a passion for playing the piano and for music but they, they, for various reasons, uh, chose not to make it a profession. But it's, uh, in the terms of amateur competitions, it's really in the best, in the best uh, description of the word uh, amateur, not in the negative one that is, that is uh, not up to standard. Some of the amateur pianists play very, very well, maybe as well as professionals. So the definition, uh, it was a little bit longer. Uh, one, someone who is not, which is, this is not his profession and is not making money of playing or of teaching music. That was That's the definition correct, yes. that, that I heard. But he from. may play with a professional standard. Yes. yes. Can I perhaps add something to that? Yes, uh, of course. Being the brother of a sister who's a professional pianist and has been for the last 60 years. Norma Fisher. Yes. Norma Fisher. So when, when she was young, I met many young pianists who were studying with her. And I think there's an age of musicians of every instrument that they have to decide whether they're going to make it into a professional career. And I think a lot of them come to the conclusion that there's very little place at the top and maybe everybody would like to be at the top, but their love of, the, of music is so great that they intend, even though they won't, don't want to make it a profession, to continue and they become tip-top amateur pianists. Uh, if if there weren't such animals, let's call them, there wouldn't be amateur pianist competitions or festivals. And it's obvious that a, a festival or um, a competition 
his desire for people who know how to do the job properly. An amateur pianist, as Robert said, know how to do, do the job properly. Yeah. Tal, do I you think, agree with this definition, which makes you an amateur pianist? Well, I think, in general, <laughs> yes, I agree with that. Uh, but I think it, it sounds like uh, amateur is like the opposite of professional. And I'm not sure, uh, uh, I mean, it, for sure it's correct, but there are, I think, many levels of amateurs. And for instance, amateur competitions, of course, they have the highest level of amateurs, which probably maybe can also play as a professional. But of course, there are many levels of amateurs, um, and probably a lot of them are not in a very high level. So I think if you are speaking about amateur competitions, uh, this is, of course, a very, very interesting place for amateur pianists to bring their voice and to share their playing and love for the music. Um, so if you ask me if I'm an amateur pianist, I would say I'm between amateur pianist to a pianist. <laughs> okay. Daphna, what do you think? Um. Yeah, I think uh, this is a very uh, broad uh, uh, word, amateur pianist, yeah, and amateur musician, yeah. Uh, we can, I can see in the adult music department in Stricker, uh, as well in other music festivals where, uh, amateur music festivals where I coach, there are so many different levels and you can uh, define amateur musician in so many ways. There are uh, people who come and they are 60 or 70 years old and they never touched the piano and they want to start and learn the piano and they are so passionate about it and they are doing it with, doing it with so much fun and for me it doesn't matter that they started when they are 70 and that they play um, they play easy pieces I mean they are still amateur pianists and they what important is that they do it with passion and it gives them value and uh, it is rewarding for them in so many ways. Um, and of course, we can see in the conservatory also people who studied, for example, people who studied and uh, uh, graduated from, uh, from the music academy uh, in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem. And finally, they decided to do something else, to be a doctor or to be a lawyer. But still, music has a very important uh, role in their lives, and they play in very high levels. And they play chamber music uh, at our conservatory, or they take private lessons, and they play really amazing. So this is a very, very broad thing, an amateur musician. So again, you, you, are, yeah. you are saying uh, things similar to Tal, that yeah. it's a broad range. Yeah. You have some really beginners and some professionals yeah, and who decided not to make it a profession. Yes, yeah. and it's, it's uh, all very good and uh, rewarding for yeah. everybody. Yeah. And it's <laughs> the same with competitions. Actually, I met, uh, met uh, Robert Finley in the Clyburn yes. amateur uh, competition. Uh, they, they have in the Clyburn, they have a competition and they have a festival. Okay. Um, I think, uh, perhaps I'm wrong, so correct me, that those competing consider themselves more professional and those who play for the festival don't want the stress. Some of them are very professional and yes. some of them are less professional. Am I right? Yes, this I think you are right. Yes, that's the reason. Yeah. Um, some people um, don't want the stress of uh, competing, but then nevertheless, they have very big passion to play. And I agree exactly what you said about the different levels of, of amateur pianists. Um, I want to say that um, I, I've uh, heard some amateur, some pianists, young pianists, who are just wonderful, absolutely fantastic. Maybe they were prodigies, and um, they played at Jordan Hall in Boston and big auditoriums. And um, they are multi-talented, although they they play very, very well, very high standard. Um, they have other interests as well, and um, some of them want to become doctors, uh, architects, as you said, and um, I was quite astonished. Uh, I asked them, would you like to go to Juilliard or, um, or uh, the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia? And they told me, well, um, I'm also studying biology and I'd like to become a doctor, maybe. So um, there are those people as well. Uh, in addition to those who tried to become a professional pianist and maybe couldn't make it, and they still want opportunities to play. 
to be motivated and to encourage to play. And this is, uh, I think, most people I've spoken to, amateur uh, competitions and festivals change their life for the better. Because as amateurs, we want to express ourselves musically as much as professionals. We would like opportunities. Mm -hmm. Before the advent of amateur competitions, all we did was play for ourselves for our own amusement at home. And occasionally we would have recitals. But now there are so many different opportunities that it's just wonderful to, yeah. uh, to take part in them. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing to see some of you, I think you are one of them, traveling from amateur competition yes. to amateur competition, performing yes. all over the world. That's right. Uh, I met uh, a lady, uh, Esfir Ross, oh, yes. yeah. who is very uh, yes. not very young, I would say. Uh, yes. Actually, <laughs> really, it's amazing that she can still do it and yes. travel and, and play. And, and she's so lovely and she's doing it so happily. And um, I guess that most of those people are traveling a lot. You know each other, you meet in all those competitions. Yes, you make a lot of friends, meet some very interesting people who share their love of music as well as other things as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I myself have played in all parts of the world, in Japan, in um, South America and Argentina. And um, it, it just provides uh, great opportunities uh, uh, for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I actually went to the Clyburn Amateur Competition to, to understand what what are these competitions like and then start thinking if we would like to do something similar in Israel mm -hmm. and I can really understand what it what it does pianists yes but definitely. does it do anything for the audience maybe Jacob wants to answer well <clears throat> I think I was invited here to to tell a story about what happened uh, nine years ago I and mean, first of all my career as a music producer is a second career I used to be an economist for many years and nine years ago, I decided to make the switch from uh, economics to culture, and particularly music. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. <clears throat> and there's a certain gentleman actually sitting on my side who threw me this idea, how about doing some kind of event of amateur pianists in Israel? And I, I come from the world of music. My sister is a pianist, so I grew up with piano music. I thought, nothing better to do, so I'll do that. Uh, just this morning, I looked at the material which I still have on my computer from those days, and I was amazed at how close we got to doing it. We did it in partnership with a very well-known organization called Les Amateurs Virtuos yes, in Paris. Yes, yes. And in fact, the director actually came here to attend meetings that I set up for him. And we, we, we had a brochure, we had participants. And um, it never happened. And you have to ask the question, if I claim that we got so close, how is it that it never happened? And one of the things that I say this with full transparency and not in any critical fashion, I think what was lacking, because we know that some of the main uh, amateur competitions are linked to professional competitions like Van Kleiber and like the Chopin, what was missing at the time was, I call it the blessing of the Arthur Rubin, the official blessing of the Arthur Rubinstein Society. Uh, it was very difficult to, to complete the task, even though we had everything ready. So I, I promised myself what I would say here, <laughs> that if there's a, a change of, uh, and even though I'm not in that particular field at the moment, I'm ready to come back with all my energy to make it happen here in Israel. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think the main uh, the main reason it didn't happen is perhaps that uh, no one really understood what it is uh, or, or didn't believe that it's interesting enough uh, for the audience. Uh, this, the second part, I also have to get convinced that right. the audience would like to come to this competition. All the rest, I'm already convinced. What do you think, Tal, as a member of our board? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure until this moment. <laughs> uh, I was one of the... Yes, so-called competitors in this competition, right. and I'm very happy it didn't came out. <laughs> but, uh, but well, you can play in the festival. <laughs> you can play in the festival part. Exactly. You didn't have to compete. But, but um, in the other hat, as a, in a, as a board member in the uh, Outer Rubenstein uh, Society, um, it's I think in in the United States it's very common and everybody knows about it, and it's, it sounds great. I think in Israel, specifically in Israel, 
it may have a, a, let's say a negative context for the Rubinstein competition as well, what are you doing with amateurs? Because this is like the Israeli way of thinking. You are, you said. You are a, a marketing director. That's <laughs> your you have to make role to give us the way the how to yeah. present it to the public. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daphne, so what do you... I, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, so I, I'm, I'm very happy that we are speaking about this mm. again because uh, it reminds me that uh, there are ways to, <laughs> to overcome these uh, challenges. Yeah. Daphne, what do you think? Yeah, uh, you know, I actually... Um, <laughs> have a dream, uh, which is for now currently just a fantasy, but I have a dream to make an uh, international chamber music festival in Israel uh, from amateur musicians from all over the world. Um, and well, now I think I maybe... Sorry? Can I sign? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he is <laughs> already enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah, and uh, because the... Uh, all over the world there, there exists such best festivals. I was coach, coaching in such a festival last year in Italy, in the, the East, Ischia Island. And yeah, it exists and it is so wonderful. And um, I think now I think maybe it could be combined in some way with also an amateur music competition. Um, because I think this is inspiring in so many ways. I mean, what we do in the conservatory is also already very good and it, it, there is a lot of demand for this, yeah? yeah. And uh, yes, I think, yeah, I think it could be a, a very good combination, let's say. So we have uh, at least three musicians who promise to, to <laughs> attend this competition. Are you, are you playing? No, I, no. I actually don't. I mean, so I you sing. can help with the organization. Right. Right. And yes, and no, for sure. We have the three, uh, two pianists, and uh, no, Daphne I'd, will bring us I'd, a few more. And if, yeah, sure. if we do the like, chamber. Can I add <laughs> some at one point? I, I think there is a distinction between the people from the piano world. At the time, nine years ago, I spoke with an unending number of people, people like Emmanuel Krasovsky, just one name of many. And there was tremendous enthusiasm. But when I spoke to the public, the Israelis sometimes are very snobbish as far as culture. They mm. said, yeah. you know, we hear the best professional pianists. But I think there's a connection. Uh, I think that if something like the Arthur Rubenstein uh, organization or society would support it, this would help to change public opinion in my view. Yeah, it's the I official agree. nature of the backing. At the time I couldn't go to someone and say the Arthur Rubenstein Society is behind this. Had I been able to say so, I believe, I truly believe, that the public would maybe set their snobbishness aside mm -hmm. and be willing to come to listen to it. That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Still I think, today. I, yeah, I think it is also, it is a very good combination of a uh, com uh, professional and amateur competition because the amateurs from all over the world will come and play the competition and listen to the professionals and it becomes um, a, a richer uh, event, let's say, with more uh, uh, possibilities and uh, very motivating and inspiring for those people who come to compete as amateurs. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good combination for my opinion. Yeah. I could go just at one point, among the many people I spoke to was the director of the Van Kleiben organization. And I can't remember exactly what he said, but he said it's a, the amateur f competition is a huge asset to us. I mean, he described mm -hmm. it in such positive terms, made me continue yeah. until I wasn't able to anymore. <laughs> so I remember that. But there is a problem with the public in Israel. Yeah. They're very oh. spoiled. We're very spoiled well, here. But we, we can, uh, we can uh, change it. Yes. If um, we I'm on your do side. it cleverly. Yeah. <laughs> but, Arthur, but Arthur Rubinstein was asked about what his opinion um, is about uh, amateur pianists. And he said that um, if people have a passion for playing the piano, they really enjoy it, and they, and they play well, they should be able to share the stage with him. And um, his, his, he discussed this with his wife, Alina. And then uh, Alina contacted uh, the, um, Richard Rosinski about having a competition in, in uh, Texas. And also, in 1989, the very first amateur competition was formed in Paris, Le Concours des Grands Amateurs de Piano. And, and Alina Rubinstein was on the jury of that for quite a few years. And it was, was very, very successful. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's all due to his idea and, and dream that uh, we have all these wonderful competitions now. So we the have the blessing of Arthur Rubinstein. What yes. would we want more? <laughs> yes. Yes. We have to, to conclude. 
this uh, session, regrettably. It was very interesting, but uh, they are getting ready in the hall. Mm -hmm. So I would like to thank all of you. Tal Sakharov, Daphna Itzhaki. Thank you. Robert Fisher. Robert eh, sorry, Finley. Robert, Robert Finley, Finley and Yako Fisher. And uh, let, me, uh, uh, let us hear some music and return back to the hall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
אתם יכולים, ואפשר גם בלי, זה בסדר. בכל מקרה, ברוכים השבים. אני מקווה שכולם קיבלו טלפונים. ו-Welcome back. Here we are with the last competitor for today, number 10, 22 years old from Israel, Yonatan Senik. Yonatan will play Chopin, scherzo number 4 in E major, opus 54, and Prokofiev, sonata number 6 in A major, opus 82. Yonatan Senik. <laughs> 